Hello everyone and welcome to episode 30 which means that your next video you'll get will be a, a special video where I do a tour of Wildwood Zoo um, basically just going through the Oceania area if you want to watch the other areas make sure to watch the episode 20 special and episode 10 special um, but yeah in today's episode I build the first habitat for the Siberian tiger there is still a, another habitat that I haven't completed um, but that will be episode 31 as it took me a extremely long time to build this habitat um, I don't know I was kind of just faffing about with everything and it just took a lot of my time and I thought I'm not going to sit down for an extra two hours building the other habitat as well because the other habitat is more ambitious I would say um, but yeah um, this habitat I would say is definitely not my favorite but I actually quite like how I've laid it out um, I like a lot of the structures in there and I don't know I feel like there's a real sense of more realism in that one than there is any other um, like I love the red crown crane habitat it's really grown on me, <laughs> but this Siberian tiger habitat, I think it will grow on me even more. I really like kind of just how it came out. Um, and I even got lucky in this video. I got a pseudo melanistic tiger pair. Um, well, not tiger pair. Um, I think it was a male one I got. Um, I can't remember. I think it was a male that I plonked in for the habitat. And then I've got a normal one with it. The other habitat has a golden tiger and a leucistic white tiger. Um, if you didn't know, the pseudo melanistic and the golden tiger is kind of like the the new species added in. That was 1.16, I think it got added. Um, but in the most recent, the recent ones, it got added, um, which is very cool because in I don't I don't know why they added it particularly. I think to make the animal more interesting, and that probably means I'm not going to add like a another tiger, a smaller one maybe, like the Sumatran one. I don't think they'll add that. Um, but if they were, and that would be an Indonesian pack, I want them to add the tree kangaroo. But yeah, but talking about packs, a couple of days ago, well, a couple of days ago, I say that as I am filming this today when it came out, there was a announcement from planet zoo that the barnyard animal pack is coming out which i don't know I, I might have said it in this video not in this video but one of the early ones that i wanted a petting zoo pack um and i felt like they listened to me i know they haven't i'm a very small channel but i <laughs> i felt like they listened and they delivered it and i'm so thankful i love i love petting zoos myself um obviously i love zoos in general but pe petting zoos are just like I've always been to one when I was a kid and it's just always my favourite and I'm really excited to see Highland Cattle I have seen them before um, not necessarily at a petting zoo but I have seen them in fields um, and stuff like that when I, I've been to Scotland myself um, and I, I have I had the opportunity to see one but we didn't we just went to see um, Edinburgh Zoo funny enough um I went there and that gave this is what gave me a lot of inspiration for this um i'm taking a lot of the photos i have and trying to replicate and there is one habitat which i'm going to try and replicate for the tarkin um because i've got another idea and basically i'm going to add a himalayan area towards the back of the sort of park um so where like the end where it's a bit blank that's going to be the himalayan section with a red panda habitat and a target enclosure. And then obviously on the other side the train ride is gonna be like the just the Shavrowski's horse sort of area that I'm just gonna build. I might build that, I might not, we'll see. Um but yeah. The reason why I'm not gonna build that is because I really want to do a petting zoo sort of zoo I guess series, like a little mini series, be my first one. Just doing like a little petting zoo. Um but yeah, let me know what you think of that. I'm thinking of, I've got an idea for what I want to do. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, 
obviously that's going to be released on the was it 30th of april i don't know my days very well um i think it is 30th of april 29th i don't know but anyway when it does get released um i'm going to pick it up obviously and i will definitely do a series on that um if that is the case i would have to not upload any wild Wood Zoo series for maybe a couple of videos as i focus on that one um and that means prehistoric kingdom videos might have to wait um our prehistoric kingdom videos don't seem to get that much anyway um so i'm not too bothered about that but i'm sorry my dinosaur fans but you have to wait a little bit longer um, um but yeah i will definitely be adding to this series um with maybe a couple more animals from not from the petting was it called barnyard animal pack i'd probably be adding i don't know oh what animals are there that's actually domesticated maybe the llama um then again there's the alpaca so we'll see how that goes um i have actually done one of my previous series i wanted there to be an alpaca um and i've actually replaced it for a llama so <laughs> yeah it's funny um anyway i'm gonna stop this because i've been doing this for a little bit longer than i anticipated and i will be doing siberian tiger facts in the middle for today's video and i will just jump in at the end and say what's happening next video and yeah i'll see you then bye Hello again, and welcome to the part of the video where I do some tiger facts. This is the species of the Siberian tiger, but in most areas it's known as the Amur tiger. Amur me meaning sort of that Siberia range, um, and more snowy type animals. I don't know where it originated from, it's probably some Latin word. Um, but yeah, we've got another area um, which I could add to this zoo, but I don't think I will. It is the Amur Leopard. I was thinking of actually where the Siberian Tigers are now. That would be the Amur Leopard habitat. But I thought I prefer to have tigers. Um, the zoo is based on conservation efforts for rhinos. Obviously that sort of tusk market and the stuff like that, sadly. Um, but tigers, I feel like we should be big on as well. We've got both species of tigers now in the, in the game. So I've completed that. And I've never built habitat for the Siberian tiger before, so I'm really excited to do this. The Siberian tiger, I'm going to call it the Amur tiger, it's a bit long. The Amur tiger lives in sort of that Russian far east. It can range to that northern Korea line, um, northern China and even Mongolia. They have existed in quite expansively in that region. However due to poaching, blah, 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 blah. They have been reduced to fewer than 4,000. There was actually, I think, fewer than 200 not too long ago, and they bounced back, and now they're a little bit better than they were. Um, but yeah. So they live in temperate forests. Um, they are very good at that. They're very well adapted with that. I'll go on to that a little bit later. But... They're like any sort of tiger, you know, but they are just absolutely enormous. This, this tiger is actually the largest world cat, um, the world's largest cat. A male Siberian tiger can grow to about 10 feet long from head to tail and can weigh up to 575 pounds, which is, I don't know how to explain that in kilos. I'm not very good with that, but that's a lot. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to go near that. Um, I'm trying to work out about 261 kilos, that is. So that is, you know, I wouldn't want to go near that. But they are obviously mammals, so the males usually bigger. And the females are smaller, so they weigh around 240 to 290 pounds, which is probably around 140 kilos, I reckon, 
the average one is. Um, but yeah, they're very, very cool. And they are the only tigers that can survive in the snow. As all the tigers range south of where they are. They are the most northerly tiger to exist. There was tigers below them. Um, not like below them, they are still alive, obviously. But below them, you have the northern sort of China tigers. They live in northern China and southern China. And then you've also got the tigers that rage in Indonesia, in India, which we've got the Bengal tiger. And there used to be tigers in Africa, but they're not alive anymore, I'm pretty sure. But there was 100% tigers in Europe. I forgot what that was called, but there was, and they became extinct not too long ago, which is good because I live in UK, but I don't, they used to live in the UK, not anymore, luckily. Um, but yeah, the tiger has the unique stripes, obviously, and I don't think I mentioned this in my tiger videos before, because these were my first videos, but the tigers have very unique stripes. And no two tigers have the same match stripes. This is like us humans where our fingerprints are completely unique from each other. And it is the exact same principle. But yeah, I think the stripes are very cool looking in my opinion. They're my favourite animal. And I have seen Siberian tigers before. And they are just so beautiful looking. And I just can't believe how big they were when I saw them. They're just huge. I think I saw the female as well, which makes me feel a little bit like, oh my god, the males must be absolutely huge. The sort of colouring of them, you may think, how does that, you know, tigers in the rainforest are obviously bright orange, how does that help? Well, you say that, but the pale orange coat and the stripes are actually not very common on the Siberian tiger. In fact, they have the palest orange coat and fewer stripes of any tiger species. And this is to help them blend in with the snow habitat, which is which is snow covered for about 99% of the year. Um, when I say snow covered, I mean there is still snow on the ground. It might be reduced, but there is still snow on the ground. Um, but yeah, the black and white spots behind their ears, I don't think you can see them in the game. I know they had them in game, but I, don't, I think it's quite hard to see. It actually helps the cubs to follow their mother through the forest. It's such a funny thing. And baby cubs are really, 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 really cute. As I said, they live in these temperate forests in Far East Russia. They live in actually a main sanctuary called Land of the Leopards. Oh no, Land of the Cats. Land of the... One of them things. Land of the Cats. And basically... That has Siberian tiger, that has tons of elk, tons of boar, tons of leopards, tons of everything. And basically, all, all what they do is they live in this sort of big ecosystem where there's tons of apex predators, but there's very little prey. And this is, means that there's not much population there. They're quite rare in that fact. There's just not many of them anyway. Um, so when he said there's 4,000, there shouldn't be about over 100,000 of them. There should be around 10,000 of them, really, to keep that sort of population under control. Because as humans, we don't like elk either, so they get hunted as well for their horns. So it's not the best. Um, but yeah, tigers in their territory, they like they don't like to move about, really. They they just like to kind of just roam in their, their way. They have their pathways that go down every time. And somehow they always find something. Their prey is always there. But they're lucky about that. That there is enough prey within the mounds. Because, you know, I think the prey will just leave. So they are quite lucky about that. But the size, they need quite a large size. Um, it's quite hard to get a small sized tiger, obviously. Because this one's absolutely huge. So it really ranges with just what there is in the environment. Um... But when there is cubs, the tigers will hunt in a significantly narrow area than like any other animal. And that's mainly because the, the mum doesn't want to lose their cubs. She's quite protective over them. Um, so, yeah, it's quite important for them to rear their cubs up. But luckily, for if you want to go see them, you have to be 
extremely lucky and you know make sure you don't catch on fire if there's some random scientists by the permafrost if you know what I mean the people set fire to the permafrost and it burns off in the air because of the gases in the permafrost anyway that's another story um, the Siberian forest has a lot of rivers which they can break the ice on because it, it freezes completely freezes over in the winter but the tigers like to stay near the water which you think how do cats like the water but tigers actually love the water and they're brilliant swimmers their thick coats allow them to submerge and it basically just keeps them cool i know it sounds weird but in the summer they actually get hot because they've got such thick fur and they're so adapted to them winter months where it goes minus 50. they're not used to that summer where it goes up to maybe a little bit above zero it's some summers and most commonly it happened more so they like going in the water and just getting themselves cool off and not only that but it's just a good way to get food um so yeah if you don't know there are fish in the siberian rivers so don't worry they will just catch fish if they need to um so don't worry about that now let's move on to the adorable cubs i've got a couple of facts for you there so the tiger cubs are born blind for their first two months the average tiger lays, I say lays, gives birth to about two to six cubs. So quite a lot, really. If you think six cubs in the middle of one of the coldest regions in the whole world and you've got to somehow rear your horrible little children who will just get absolutely on your nerves by yourself because the tigers won't stay together. It would just be the female by themselves, usually. So you've just got to kind of go. And not only that, but for the first two months, the cubs completely rely on their mother and their eyes maybe were opened about six to 12 days after birth and then they still can't see that well. So, you know, they received their eyesight very, very late. In fact, the tigress is exclusively responsible for the cub security and care. So, as I said, in the land of the cats, there are leopards and the leopards will go that far down to get a cub. It's very hard to get food out over there, so they will try their hardest to get them. But luckily for them, the cubs do learn to hunt at a young age. Around two months of age, the cubs will then follow their mums out of the cave. And then they kind of watch how their mum hunts from a distance. What, what they'll do is the mum will say, stay there. The mother will obviously pick a nice location and then the mother will go off and find food, come back and they can eat it because they know how to eat. And what happens is around eight months old, the mother will teach the cubs how to hunt. And I have seen a, a documentary. I think David Attenborough was the, obviously the thingy. And it's basically this tiger. I think it was actually leopard young, but this tiger was teaching like how to hunt and they're just playing around and fooling around and you know while it's annoying for the mother while she's trying to hunt something can let all the prey run off the cubs are learning how to when they play it they learn how to do stuff so like stalking pouncing swatting and climbing they learn all that from being cubs um but you can see that in the documentary um i don't know what it is but there was the leopard and it made me laugh, the two baby leopards, um, one of them climbed up the tree and then pounced on the other one. It was so cute. Anyway, so I'm just thinking of what to say because I have done quite a lot of talking and my voice has not been that well recently, as you can probably hear. Anyway, let's move on to some of the sad, depressing things. So, sadly, the Siberian Tigers did wander down to Korea as I said before but you know sadly that's not really the case anymore um, it was known as the land of the tigers but around the Japanese colonial period which is 1910 to 1945 tons of like thousands of wild animals sadly were hunted down it included bears tigers leopards wolves and they were killed every single year by the Japanese 
and they were saying that it was protecting the people um, from the animals, which on the most part, probably true, but that's just the case, I'm afraid. And in October 1921, the last Korean tiger was reportedly shot dead on Mount Daedok in, I'm not going to pronounce where that is, but such up Mount Daedok, I don't even know if I'm saying Daedok wrong or whatever, but yeah. But still to this day, the Siberian tiger is now the national animal of South Korea. It holds a very deep status, deep status, status in the South Korean culture, and in the Korean folklore and mythology, the occasionally the tigers will show up, and they are seen as the soul of the gods. Basically, let's put it that way. But a lot of the Siberian tiger is coming back, luckily, and in two thousand and eight. The IUCN Red List switched status of Siberian Tigers from critically endangered to endangered. And it's very, it shows a lot of commitment to these Tigers. Um, you can definitely tell people worked hard to keep them alive. And this is where I kept the fact of how many there were. There is, There was 20 in the 1930s and it bounced back and now... There's over four, th- just just under four thousand, I think there was, um, but yeah. But the tigers are still at risk, so don't think they're like, oh, they're fine, they're increasing. They are increasing, but they are decreasing slightly. And sadly, there is a Amur Tiger Center in Russia, where twenty to thirty tigers are poached every year in the country, and this accounts for about seven eighty-five percent of all tiger deaths and yeah obviously you can tell it's mainly for their fur for the russians and then all the body parts will be sent to traditional chinese medicine which a lot of these um asian medicinal properties they're very embedded in their culture and people think oh you know they're just doing it just to kill the animals well they're not They've been doing it for ages, but now with all this technology, they're killing them too much. And, you know, they now understand the importance now, the the popularity for them and stuff like that. So it is going down. Don't worry, they aren't going anywhere. But yeah, that's all the facts I've got for, for you today. There was one more, but I don't want to talk for any longer. Otherwise, I won't be able to see the tour video. So, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Hello everyone and welcome to the end of today's video. It's going to be a short one as this is quite a long video and just got shorter down a little bit. Um, but yeah, um, thank you for watching. If you could please leave a like and subscribe, that would be greatly appreciated. And comment if you want to be named after an animal. Um, I would like to be named after a Siberian animal. Um, Siberian animal? Siberian tiger. So if you could do that, that would be greatly appreciated. And I like all the feedback and I always will reply. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one where there will be a tour video and I'll finish off the other tiger habitats. Bye.